tell me a bit about where you were last week, Sally, because that's how this all came about when we first started discussing uh, your whereabouts and what, what you were up to. Yeah, last week, we, uh, myself and my colleague Jackie Downer were in, um, in Manchester, and on Thursday, we were at the Housing and Support Alliance conference called No Going Back, and on uh, Friday, we were part of the launch of the Learning Disability Alliance, of which we're both sitting on the advisory group. So a really, really good couple of days and really thought-provoking. And we were invited to be on the panel at the conference on Thursday. And the question posed was, is the care industry fit for purpose? Um, now, obviously, we said no. Not because we don't think there's some good stuff going on, but the reality is that many people with learning difficulties are still being sold for a cheaper price through block tendering. So that can't ever be right to me. We've got families saying they feel invisible and ignored. Um, and excluded from the lives of people they love. We have support workers saying they feel bound up in rules and regulations that, that limit them from really responding to individuals. And we have managers that say they're in this, this sort of uh, this turmoil, this, this crazy system that keeps spinning them around. It's really hard to pin and say, whoa, enough's enough. So our response was no, not because there isn't some good stuff going on, but we've got a long way to go before people are truly free to live a life, to live a good ordinary life. Um, and last week was in interesting timing too because um, we also discussed there was some press um, coming out today and I read an article, as you suggested, called We Must Stop Learning Disabled People Being Dumped in Waste Bins of Life, which is quite, quite a sensational uh, headline to read and, then, and the stories behind it are just incredible. It's truly shocking, aren't they? And I'm... Um... Um, we obviously we, we knew last week the report was going to come out today. Um, so a few things today. One is a report came out from Sir Stephen Bubb's committee that he was asked to chair. It's called Time for Change. Um, and, you know, it's, it's telling us to some extent what we already know, um, that assessment and treatment units where people are sent hundreds of miles away from the people that love and care for them, they're sent away from the communities that know them to be supported by people that don't know them well in settings that are far from ordinary or home-like or have it much value to them. Uh, it, it doesn't work. And shocking stories that, that have, are just so horrific in terms of Stephanie recently learning that Stephanie died after over seven years of being locked in a padded cell. Um, and that was called her support. How can that ever be right in anywhere in the world, and it's just inhumane, and the system is allowing this to happen. So the report today absolutely said that. Just going back to this report, Sally, um, yep. Stephen Bubb's report, and obviously this is all kind of off the back of the Winterbourne view and the incidents there. For me, it was quite shocking to read that that, that all was uncovered in 2011, now it's 2014, and we're missing all these deadlines that were set. How do you feel about this kind of mistake? Uh, well, it's, it's awful, isn't it? You know, Winterbourne, uh, basically in 2011, Panorama program exposed some horrific abuse at a place called Winterbourne View. You know, those of us who have supported people for many years uh, knew this sort of stuff happened. It wasn't a big surprise. It was a horrific shock to see it on film and realise the extent of the abuse. Um, but Again, unfortunately, not totally surprised by the lack of progress since then. I think we have, as part of the Campaign for Fair Society, we've been working hard to say this has to come to an end. These places, assessment and treatment units must close. We need to not refer people in anymore and we need to find creative local support for, for individuals in need of support at times of crisis often. What shocks me more than the lack of reduction is the increase in numbers. So hundreds and hundreds of more people are being referred to these places that we know are not fit for purpose, where we know people cannot be valued individually, cannot get the support they need close to the family, the people that love them, to help them thrive and actually get supported to live as part of their community again in, in a way that's, that's right for them. So, um, yes, yeah, shocking in a way, not totally surprised that progress hasn't been made. But I think progress won't be made necessarily um, at the big political levels. And at Paradigm, we talk about desperate need to create a groundswell of discontent at all levels. We meet people on a day-to-day -day basis who accept support that just isn't good enough for anybody. 
They accept support workers turning up late or cancelling at the last minute. They accept the fact they have strangers do personal care every other day. Families feel that they, they can't uh, really uh, speak out in case they lose the support they have or they're seen as, as an irritant to the system. I think we really need to change all this stuff because if, if we accept this poor practice on a day-to-day -day basis, more and more of the cases of people being locked away are likely to happen. Does that make sense? If we, if we yeah. don't grab something and say enough's enough, we can't let this happen. Absolutely. Uh, and and where what what is the positive side of this? Like, what's coming out of all this sensational stories and and the groundswell of discontent? Where do families go, and where do people with learning learning disabilities go to yeah. try and make a change? Yeah. Well, I, I think I think it's important, you know, that the report uh, Stephen Bubbles produced today isn't thrown out. I don't think it's all right. But as Rob Gregg said in his blog today from NDTI, there's some good stuff in there, but there's some stuff that's that it's not giving enough solutions. We need to start giving solutions. I was chatting with my colleague Joe this morning about how we need to show some of the good stuff and how it can be possible to change things. So I think in terms of Sir Bubbles' report, we can't close down. Uh, providers, as, as Rob Gregg said, but what we can do is stop commissioners buying from this. We need to redesign how we commission the right support for individuals. We need to find ways of really engaging families, and to me that's where the Learning Disability Alliance really has a strength, because it's bringing together families, self-advocates, people with learning difficulties, and agencies offer support together to say, do you know what, let's not stand alone, let's not fight this separately. Let's come together and create a national force to really create this sense that we're in this for real change and we're not going to accept anything less. So we need people with learners themselves and families to feel able to go to their local councils, their MPs. We need them to say to their providers, this isn't good enough, we want different. We need the providers to be able to say and be brave enough to say, we've had enough, we need to change this. And I think we can bring about real change and I think the Learn Disability Alliance is one of, for me, a really good sign of bringing together. I think the other report today that was published from Brandon Trust, um, you know, called Finding Freedom and one quote that really strikes me from there is that we've talked for years about people being supported to live in the community. The research Brandon Trust have carried out shows actually people live in the community but are still very disconnected from their community. And it's almost like care without community is what they're talking about. So we need to work much wider than services. We need to work at a local level. We need to work with local people. We need to get in the Daily Mail, the Sun, where people read stuff, not just on Radio 4 and The Guardian. And we need to have this, this political debate in the mainstream because it's a human rights issue. It's not a social care issue. It's a basic human rights issue.